Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you a book that you can use to learn pre-algebra. It's called Pre-Algebra, an Integrated Approach. It was written by Lyle and Hesswood. And this is an older edition. Um, I don't know if there's newer ones available. I will look after I make this video and I will leave any links I can find in the description. Also at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you another book that I do know is widely available. Um, it's a workbook, so it doesn't have as much content as this one, but it's super affordable, and you can also use that to learn pre-algebra. So you'll have two different ways, uh, two different sources of books, different types of books that you can use. This one is from 2007. There's the copyright. And let's just take a look at some of the contents here. So it starts with the integers, really basic stuff, adding integers, subtracting integers, then variables and solving equations, solving application problems, and then we have rational numbers, positive and negative fractions, rational numbers, positive and negative decimals, and then turning the page, still have some more stuff over here as well. Some more content here so you can see all the basic stuff that you would typically see in a pre-algebra course now you might be thinking pre-algebra um this is uh what kids take i guess i guess it is um i am looking at this from a college level perspective so i think that the audience of this book is perhaps uh students who are trying to go to college and don't know a lot of mathematics and so they need to take a pre-algebra course because this, this is this is a college level. Let's see if we can find like a, an intro here. But this is a college level textbook. E even though it's pre-algebra, um, you know the, the audience is supposed to be college students. That doesn't mean that, um, yeah, this is definitely something for uh, for college students probably. Now I don't know if any uh, schools use this, like uh, middle schools, uh, things like that, elementary schools, but. Uh, I don't think that's the, that's the case. Introduction to algebra integers. Yeah, it just it looks like a college textbook. Uh, I've never taught uh, pre-algebra. Uh, that's the 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 most basic math course I've ever taught personally. Uh, has been intermediate algebra, and I guess, I guess the course before that uh, would be would be this pre-algebra course here. Um, I do have some pre-algebra videos uh, on my channel here. You can check out as well. So you can watch free videos, or you can just Google videos. You can find lots of videos on the internet uh, for pre-algebra problems. But I think it's nice to have um, it's nice to have examples. Here's an example here. Let's look at this one. Writing numbers in digits. Example four it says write each number using digits. Five hundred sixteen thousand nine. The first group name is thousand. So you need to fill two groups of three digits thousands and ones, right? 516 and then thousand and then nine. Yep. Comma between groups. The number is, and so you might be thinking, oh, that's obvious, but, but you learn that somewhere, right? So these are things that are learned. And I guess this is where you learn it, right? You learn it at some point in your life, maybe when you're in school, uh, and then people forget it. And then, so sometimes they have to take pre-algebra courses like this uh, in college. Uh, when I started college, by the way, I started, I think I started in pre-algebra. Yeah, I started in, in pre, I started in the course before intermediate. So um, I did learn this in college as well, or at least some of this stuff, at least some of this stuff. I'm sure I knew some of it uh, already. Um, you can see here, here's the exercises. Look at all of these wonderful exercises here. So you get tons of exercises here in the back of the, uh, the end of the section, the back of the section. And then in the back of the book, that's where you have, that's where you have answers to the odd numbered ones. One thing that's funny about this book is like they really make a big deal about like, hey, you know, it's, there's the negative side in front of that three. They they write it kind of funny, um, and that's probably on purpose. I'm sure the authors talk about uh, why that's the case uh, somewhere in the preface, but I didn't feel like uh, going through it. But it certainly sticks out when you look at those signs like that, those negative signs. Yeah, this would be really good for anybody, uh, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, uh, retired and just doing math for the sake of doing math to keep your mind healthy. Uh, 
this is a, a great book. Look at this. This is a good example. Using exponents with negative numbers. So here they have uh, negative 5 to the second power, and they're writing that as negative 5 times negative 5, which negative and negative becomes positive, so that gives you, that gives you 25. Then here they have negative 5 cubed, so you get negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, which is, I like how they do that, 25, then times negative 5. That's practically how you would do it. Um, you know, eventually you memorize this, and you memorize uh, that there's a pattern, right? When the number is even, um, the result's going to be positive. When the exponent is odd, uh, the result is going to be negative. So, using some example here, using the order show you let's take a look at this example here using order of operations working from left to right negative 8 minus negative 6 plus negative 11 do addition subtractions from left to right I see so negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2 and then you add that to negative 11 you get negative 13 that's a really good way to do it right think about that so if I'm looking at this let me let me just let me write that down and let's just go through that because I think that could be, I just want to emphasize how good of a, an example uh, this is. So the example they give us, it's a simple one, but let me just write it down. Negative eight minus, and then the, 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 this is probably why they put the negative up here like this so that it's different from the minus sign, right? So that they can do double negatives. So that's probably the reason for making it red. Um, but this is in parentheses, and then plus negative 11. Again, I'll put it in parentheses just for clarity. Uh, the book didn't have it in parentheses, and they're basically saying that you add these first. Now they skip the steps here, but remember this becomes a positive, so this is because it's negative and negative. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, then you add that to that, and so you're going to get negative 13, right? Negative 2 plus negative 11. That's exactly, uh, that's exactly what they do in the book. Okay, so take a look at that, and now let's go, let's go to the book. And let's look at that example again, and you'll see, um, you'll see that that's pretty much uh, exactly what they do. Let's just zoom in here so you can see here. So you see there, right there, negative eight plus six is negative two, and then you add that to negative, to add that to negative eleven, you get negative thirteen. So they're just teaching you how to think almost with that example, which is really cool, right? So again, these are things that you learn somewhere. You're like, oh yeah. I know how to do that, um, and that's good. It's good if you know how to do this already, right? It means you know some mathematics. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this stuff, and I remember learning some of this stuff. I remember learning the stuff with variables. First time I saw this stuff, I did not understand it at all. Yeah, wow. I remember really struggling with some of this stuff. So it takes time. It takes effort. You know, if you're, if you're watching this and you're thinking, yeah, I'm never going to get better at this, you will, you will. So with a book like this, what you want to do, so let's say you buy the book, right? So what do you do next? Well, then you really have to kind of like sit down and, and you know, start doing math every day. So I think the first thing you should do, let me, let me give you a list. First thing you should do is, you know, do math every day. That's probably the first thing you should do, right? Do math every single day. So you get a book like this, do math every day. And then step two, um, just repeat one. I mean, it's really that simple. There's there's no secret formula. Um, if, if, you, if you can do this, you will get better, you know? And I always think it's like anything else, you know? If you wanna get better at swimming, you swim. If you wanna get better at riding a bike, you ride your bike. If you want to get better at Speaking a new language, you speak the language. If you want to get better at math, you have to do mathematics. Um, so yeah, yeah, pretty nice book. Um, so yeah, also I should mention, um, oh, there's another book. I promised you another book, I forgot, I forgot, right? I have it here. So the other book I wanna show you, oh, oh, before I show you the book, before I show you the book, let's just take a quick look here in the back, wow. Wow, wow, look at all of these answers. I mean, that is just completely ridiculous, right? So many answers. And oh, this book, sorry, I just gotta smell it. I'm just gonna give it a whiff. Oh, it's knowledge. Look at all of these beautiful answers in the back of the book here. So it looks like you have the odds, but I think there might, it might be less than the odds. And the reason I say that is because 
Who wrote this book? Math people. Math people are very careful with their choice of words when it comes to certain things. Selected exercises, that means that perhaps it is not quite the odds, maybe most of the odds. That's usually how it works. A lot of times if there's like a derivation or a proof, um, the author will omit that from the back of the book. It's a common trend I've seen uh, over and over again uh, in in most of the math books or pretty much all of them that I own. So, so yeah, great book. And I will uh, I'll look for it. I'll leave a link in the description. Hopefully it's available. I don't know. I was going to look and I just I forgot. Um, but I wanted to show it to you because I think it's a really good choice for pre-algebra. And yeah. Also, the other book, which is available for sure, and again, I'll leave a link, is this one here. Um, I've talked about this one before, so I'll try to keep this short. This is Essential Pre-Algebra Skills Practice Workbook. It was written by Chris McMullen. Uh, and I bought, I bought this on Amazon. I have a couple of his books. They're all really good. Um, I think they're good because they're affordable uh, and they're easy. They're available, right? Like a lot of times I'll talk about books and I'll say, oh, it's a great book, but there's like two copies on the internet, right? So that might be the case with that pre-algebra one. So again, I'll look, uh, but it is a solid book. It's hard to find a pre-algebra textbook. So here's the copyright on this one, 2020 by Chris McMullen, PhD. And then here are the topics in Chris's wonderful book. So exponents, uh, order of operations, fractions, decimals, percents, working with expressions, solving equations, ratio problems, rate problems, inequalities. He has an answer key, which is really, really fantastic. Uh, and so he provides answers to all of uh, the exercises in the back of the book. Now, one of the things I should mention um, about this book is that, as you can see here, it doesn't have everything, right? So you can see that this is this is a workbook, meaning that look, you can write in it. You write in the book, right? You can write in that one, the other one, but that one's really it's, it's what's called the textbook, right? So um, it's a little more comprehensive. One of the things I've noticed um, in the books by this guy, by this author, uh, Chris McMullen. And not so much in this one, because I mean, I feel like in this one, I mean, he does a great job explaining. I mean, these are, these are great explanations, but a lot of the pre-algebra books, especially the modern ones, they also do a great job explaining. But his more advanced books, like his ones on calculus and stuff, um, the steps he shows, I feel like, go above and beyond other textbooks, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So great explanations in this book, and even better in his more uh, advanced books. So, so you see how it works basically, right? You have, you have a little explanation at the beginning of the section. So you read some stuff, he gives you some knowledge, he gives you three examples, and then it's like, go, and it's you. It's on you, you finish. And then you go to the next section. So it's like little tidbits of information. Um, there's a lot of uh, mathematicians who write books like that, more, more advanced books, tiny sections. I think that's a good way to assimilate the information. And then if you go to the back of the book, Well, he gives us this, right, which is wonderful, a glossary. That's amazing, right? That's that's really useful. It's very, very useful. And then you have answers to every single problem in the back of the book. Just absolutely amazing, right? The, the So this is all great. This is probably the biggest pro of this book are, are, one, what it does contain. It does a great job of covering it. It's got full solutions in the back. It's got great examples. It's perfect for what it does contain. And the only con is what it doesn't contain. So can you really say something is bad if it doesn't have anything? Not really, right? You can't really, it's not really a criticism of the book. Um, but for what it is, this is a great book. It's Essential Pre-Algebra Skills Practice Workbook. And again, it's limited in the topics, but that's okay, right? That, that's that's acceptable. It's not it's not meant to be um, a comprehensive, a comprehensive pre-algebra book, right? It's a workbook. So yeah, big difference though between these. Look at the size difference, right? Look at the size difference. That's why there's a price difference. Keep that in mind, right? So like, um, I don't know how much this costs. I'm pretty sure it's less than 20 or 25 bucks. It's probably a lot less than 25. But this, this could vary. This could be five dollars, right? Because this could be five bucks, or it could be 50 or 80 or 100, right? New, new. This book was probably like over 100 bucks easy. Uh, usually that's how it works for for those old school textbooks. Nowadays, unfortunately though. Uh, and it's just the way of the world, right? Because of the internet, most people have online homework when they take courses, so they don't have the physical books. So that's why I think used books still have a really big place in the world, especially math books, because um, they're so affordable. So yeah. Oh, another thing, if you want to learn math, another way, I have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. Please check them out. 
I've got courses on algebra. College algebra would be the closest I have to this on my website, which is really good. If you if you already if you think this is too easy, jump into college algebra, right? And um, learn some math there. Mathsorcerer.com. They're on Udemy, but if you get my courses, please use the links from my website. Also, if you found any value in this content, feel free to subscribe. And the key takeaway from this video is that, you know, you can learn math, right? You just have to actually do math. And a, a book like this or, or this one can really help you on your math journey. Just try to be consistent, right? Try to develop those habits to where you're doing a little bit of mathematics, you know, every single day. Anyways, keep doing math.